Welcome back everyone to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. McCullover, and it's now February 12th, 1968. So, uh, at the end of the last episode, we struggled a little bit with the economy, and just the numbers things, and just like be going between the Japanese sphere as well as the OFM. So basically, we had a middle ground, but then I tried it off screen, and then it, it always, almost always, it actually always went to the OFN, but because we chose Sabir, I went ahead and just used console commands and uh, forces through basically to establish Japanese relations. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. And we're currently finishing up proposed Mongolian pipeline. One of Japan's greatest weaknesses has always been natural resources. The ravenous Japanese economy simply never had enough on the whole miles to sustain itself. It's a big part of why Japan went on to conquer so much of Asia. The war machine simply could not function without the coal of Manchuria and the oil of Indonesia. Even now, an inefficient sphere still struggles to keep up with the material demands of Japan, fortunately for us. Resources have always been among Russia's greatest strengths. We produce almost everything and a great amount as well. We should see if Japan wouldn't be opposed to the construction of a pipeline through Mongolia to facilitate materials trade between the two nations. So, for this one, I think it was Titan that they preferred, and obviously we went with Sabir, so obviously it's just, it just makes more sense. Like, it sucks that, that, that OFN probably was trying to skew our way towards them, but it is what it is, and a bipolar partnership. At last, we've taken the necessary steps towards decisively aligning ourselves with the powerful Pacific government and deepening the association between us, finally creating a partnership with them, a certain to stand the test of time. While the decision came with no shortage of controversy from those who had favored a deal with the other power, it is done and there is nothing that they can do about it now. There's little reason for them to, do, to be bitter either. We've reaped great rewards from our improved trade with their chosen partners, and the benefits have been seen by everyone that matters. The Japanese accept the pipeline. Good. Good news. The Japanese have accepted our request to build a pipeline through Mongolia. Now that we know that Japan is interested, it's time to work on the details on how the pipeline should be built. Splitting the cost may be the best idea, but another option is to involve more Russians in the project to ensure the pipeline stays in our influence. The first decision is to be made is who should build the pipeline. Our first option is a mix of Japanese contract workers and severe employees. While balancing a bond line between Japanese and Russian, knowing the Japanese, they may hamper the project more than help it. We can instead invite Sabir to take all the work. <clears throat> And while it may be more expensive for us, the output may be far greater. However, the Japanese may not like the decision, seeing us as taking too much control. What option should we choose? Uh, decrease the loyalty of Sabir by a small amount. Um, strength. Where are they at? We're almost perfect already, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, just take, they'll take all the work. It doesn't really matter to me. If the Japanese ultimately say no, oh well, it is what it is. Um, but I did want to go with Japan for that one. The materials. Now the decision on who will build the pipeline is out of the way. We must decide on who will provide the materials. Both. We have both the needed resources to build the pipeline, but the materials will be expensive for both transport and use. It will not be a small price tag. The first option is for us to provide most of the needed materials to construct the pipeline. While it will satisfy the Japanese government and ensure that we are the ones working hardest, it will be more expensive. Another solution is to try and strike a balance between both Japan and Central Siberia. This means we will both supply the materials. The last option is to make Japan fully supply the operation while cheaper for us. It will make Japan happy. But but besides, how much will they have put in this project anyway? Perhaps there's now's the time for them to foot the bill. Hmm. We won't do this one. Provide all the needed materials. Alright. And maybe there's another one here, hopefully. The pipeline's completed. Look at that! We can receive news from Mongolia that the pipeline we helped construct with Japan has been finally been built. With this new pipeline completed, it'll be much easier for natural gas to travel between us and the Japanese sphere. This will be a great boon for the Central Siberian and Japanese econ economies, and it'll be a sign of our two nations growing closer, hopefully. The profits made from the pipeline will pay off all the costs it took to build. Right on schedule, we get oh, so much more fuel. 30% is a pretty good amount. So obviously this one is done, and we're at this point, we're pretty much done with the focus tree, so there's not much else here. Um, we could probably try to blitz through to 69. Which is nice, but, uh, oh, let's see what else we got here. We got a lot of this stuff. I don't mind trying out some of this stuff. So, like, by Chivatel, we might as well try it out. It is in progress. And then we'll probably go ahead and do this one, maybe? Night Vision Tactics. Invest in Construction. Import Heavy Machinery is probably the best one to do. So, um, other than that, I think we'll reconvene whenever we can go to war with the Siberian National Republic. Before we get to 1969, though, well, we'll read about back in business. The mega corporations have ceased their petty bickerings and state heads declared a victor. With the economies or future coming into focus, we can finally begin to take a serious look at the big picture. All in all, our domestic situation is greatly improved, and with luck, things will continue to go well. With the economy in swing and our workforce bringing a sigh of relief, we can put this whole incident behind us. All in a day's work. Very nice. Let's go ahead and grab this one first, and then uh, infrastructure. We're pretty much already done with infrastructure. That was another comment from the last video. We've already maxed out infrastructure in Central Siberia, so it is what it is. And do we have another one? 
Wait, do we have another focus? Oh, the riches of Siberia. As we continue to expand our industrial base, it will be imperative to keep a constant flow of resources to feed the engines of progress. Thankfully, the lands of Siberia are rich with our natural resources as that will be essential to driving our ever-growing economic needs. With the aid of our good friends and allies and the national champions, it's only a matter of time before the vast wealth of Siberia will be available to us in quantities unheard of before. The riches of Siberia must be exploited for the good, for the good of the Federation. All right, everyone, here we are at, and as you can see, the Siberian National Republic has just gone to war with us, which is pretty good. Off screen, uh, a few things have happened. Goring, I forgot, had actually won the German Civil War, and he was taking out a lot of people, but unfortunately for Goring, he's been cooed by Shona. And actually, we saw, like, Rex Commissariat uh, Balken Balenhals or something. So, it took out a lot of people, but obviously, he's here. Uh, yeah, not too bad. So, I have the Iron Heights Pact. Off screen, ooh, look at that sphere. That's a pretty nice sphere, except they don't have Vietnam. But. Uh, I did Project by Chevatel. We got like a, a partial success, as you could see. Um, we got like a little bit of bonus for airplane or helicopters or something. So it wasn't super important, but it was a little bit of success. And we're currently doing Bek Berkut right now. And we're about ready to go to war. Or we already are at war with these people over here. Other than that, we also have a decrease in poverty. So now we're at 15 to 25%. We literally just got there. So 15 to 25%. Not bad. Much better. Also, I started running out of these belts. So I'm building up a lot of land forts. Um, yeah, R really not much else to here to build. Really, really, really not much here, here to build, which is fine, you know, whatever. But still, there you go. Ooh, if you'd like to rebuild Irkutsk hydroelectric station capture, please go right ahead. But very, very good, because at this point, we need to build more civvies. Oh, boy. And, oh, they already maxed out infrastructure. Very good. I've literally just been waiting here, just wanting to go to war the entire time. And we do have some manpower from the um, little preparation thing, so not too bad. Expand on the build. And they have up to how many divisions? Oh, 29. That's not bad. That's a, that's a pretty good amount of guys they have. Pretty good amount of guys. Hopefully we can beat them, though, because we still have 30, 40 combo with divisions. 40 combo with. Other than that, you know what? Spend more on the military. So we can... And also, I put cut down construction all the way just because I don't want to have any more debt. Or not a lot more debt for now. So I think it'd be okay. But we'll ramp it right back up as soon as these guys are all dead. So Good, good, good. How many losses? 5,000 versus 11,000. Not great, but not bad. Oh, there it goes. Iberia. Goodbye, Iberia. Iberia, 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 Iberia. We have more planes? Yes, we do. That's kind of nice. Cool. Duplicate you guys. And then everyone here. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, we're not even using planes yet. I thought we were using planes earlier. Huh. I thought we were. Very weird. But, you know what? That should help us. And help us do well. Help us do very well. Oh, you can't win there. That sucks. They have up to 30 divisions, which is not very good. Operation Tenda, so be it. Overran in division, very, very nice. Go, tanky boys. Go, go, go. Basic jet fighters will be good. Uh, oh, you guys are only 18. Oh, my goodness. You're only 18 combat width. Five. Well, that's pretty bad, actually. <laughs> Um, just in case. I know we don't have armor on you guys yet, but do that one. Get slightly more armor. We don't have enough of them yet, but whatever. We will in time. It's only 69. Let's grab some drop tanks as well. We've got plenty of political power, which is pretty nice. So, we'll see what happens with Bakut. Anything here? No, not too much. Field Marshal doesn't have much either. 15,000 losses versus 61,000. Not bad, not great, but not bad. And you guys are getting attacked pretty crazily. That's kind of okay with us. You guys go down there, maybe. Yes, yes. Insurrection in Oman. Very nice. You beat him up as well. Good. You might be able to actually encircle those guys there, too. That'd be kind of pretty good. Oh, there goes UK. Goodbye, UK. Come on, get in there. Come on, why are you taking so long? There you go, finally. Kill them off. Mudkowski, there's no room for fascists here. Just authoritarian democracies. And let's do education as well as agriculture. That'd be very good. Are you guys helping out? No. Help them out right here. Help out your fellow worker, your fellow soldier. Oh, political thought. Any uh, propaganda, construction. Yeah, that stuff is all okay. It doesn't really help us that much. We could get some more stability. If we're going to do that, we're going to get more weekly stability then. Weekly Manpower is not bad. I did I did do that one earlier, though. 
because we were, were running out, but then we got the uh, whole event thing with more manpower, so. Uh, head on down there. If you can't encircle them, that'd be really nice. Come on, guys. Go, 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 and we are there, right? Yes, we are. Cool. Goodbye. Oh, they need some of that there. That's fine. I can't imagine these guys have much more manpower. After we saw that they only had 150,000, so... And also, I did have some coffee, but... We have no more. Oh, they're almost out of band power. So that'd be good. Another battle. No, yep, they're out. They have 22 divisions. We've overran like nine of them or something. That's pretty good. Uh, you guys need some serious help then. There you go. Nice. I mean, obviously we've lost like 50,000 ourselves, but it's a 3 to 1 ratio, so that's not too bad. Oh, wow, the tanks are looking pretty bad right now. But once these guys are all done, we'll have more civvies to work with. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better. Even though we're still building a lot more forts. But it is what it is. Hey, basic jet cast? Why not? Even better casts. And they're barely making any. Cool. Not bad. Not bad overall. Pretty good. Civilian budget boost. Let's keep doing that. Get more PP. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, Project Barakut success is to Apokan. Following a series of successful field tests, it's been determined that the S-25 missile system is ready for deployment and the first anti-air installation is nearing completion. On the outskirts of Nova Sibirsk, testing is showing the new missiles to be far better at locking onto and tracking targets and improved ability to adjust mi course mid-flight, resulting to missiles uh, in a greater number of simulated hits. Additionally, improvements to missile speed have greatly expanded the response time of anti-air emplacements, while the extended range has allowed them to project a much wider zone of control in the skies over our cities. Though Nova Sibirsk was never reached by terror bombing that plagued the lands of our west, our people still lived in cause of fear of the dark day planes, filled our skies and bombs blotted out the sun. We shall fear no longer, for if any enemy plane tries to approach our people, they shall be answered with swift and deadly vengeance. Russia's sky belongs to, uh, to no one but us. Let them come. Nice. Not bad. Pretty good. That's, I like it. We might need some more weekly manpower. Uh, it's, not, it's not really worth doing that. It's only 5,000 more manpower, but you know what? Every guy counts. You do have 21 divisions. Um, how are you not winning here? How about instead of doing that, you guys just go there. That'd be so much smarter, but... Oh, you still might be able to do... Oh, okay. Oh, flamethrowers are nice. Recon. Don't force me to force attack. You can try to beat us back here, but... It's not going to work, pieces of garbage. I don't care how many men it takes. 100,000 losses, so be it. They have no manpower, so they shouldn't be able to, to really do much against us. Right? They have no manpower, right? Yeah. Yeah, go your fat one, Metkovsky. Oh my goodness, trying to get kill this little stupid little nation off. So far away from everyone else. So far away. Oh, the airplane is captured. The skies are ours. Very good. Very, very good. Keep boosting, spending, spending, spending. Oh, poverty relief. Yes, please. Yes, please. One hundred fifty-four factories ain't enough. How is it coming along here? Oh, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. These guys. Oh, I thought the WRF would have won. That was Mr. Mario. Mario or Lazar Kaganovich. Wow. All right. So he's probably gonna go to war with us eventually, because they are like being pretty aggressive in trying to reunite all of Russia. So we'll see. Order collapses. Soviet. Soviet. Um. Honestly, just go there, guys. You should probably be able to do pretty darn well. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. That's so nice. There goes Saudi Arabia and all them. Just hold. My god, you guys suck. I don't care what it takes. Oh, I can't even force the attack. That sucks. 110,000 versus 230,000. Yeah, I'm not sure why we're losing even more now. It doesn't make any sense. Since we still have air superiority. And, like... The terrain shouldn't be that much worse over here, should it? I don't think it should. So, 
I guess our guys are tired, but what a bunch of wimps. Come on, guys. Keep moving. If they have no more manpower, you should be able to just beat the crap out of all of them. Especially with extra spending on uh, on the military. Give them some more time and then we'll do one final push. In the meantime, let's build some more civvies. Okay, we can't. Roads? Yes. Give us some time. What are you guys lacking? Guns? Yeah, we had no problem with guns beforehand, so... How pathetic you guys are. At least we can make more guns. We can't make more men that quickly, so... Where are you going, son? Where are you, do you think you're going? Oh, what do we have here? Higher important instructors. We have not done gone a higher level of this. Widespread cronyism is not very good. Oh, right, a man part two. Oh, that sucks. If we get attack here, that'd be really nice. Let's circle these two divisions, kill them off. Come on, and you should be there soon. Oh, what do we have here? Scientific research? Why not? Improved cast? Cool. <clears throat> it is almost 1970. Go and grab that one first, though. There you go, nice. No supplies for them. If we have no more manpower, cut one of these divisions off. Thank you. Saves just a slight bit amount. No, 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 no. What are you doing? Ah, they're attacking us. Good. Yep, we improved quite a bit on our deficit of infantry equipment. Give them just a little bit more time, then we'll probably try another attack. Keep getting some more money for us. Stability? Sure, why not? Why is our stability so low? I guess we're technically at war. Taking out the Far East is always a pain in the butt, because they have to go so far into their lands, you can't even core anything. Which I think is a big mistake. A fairly big mistake, because if you go into core stuff, like you might as well start doing it as soon as you take over their lands. Oof. Uh, it's 1970. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Decade. Good. Go to there, guys. Why are you taking so long doing that? Just, just kill them off. And better gun stuff. Gun wise, minus ninety two hundred. Not too much better yet. I mean, still got to deal with the resistance too. So don't want to forget about that. They only have twelve divisions left. We should be able to do this for, from here on out. But then again, I've been wrong before. Come on, don't tell me that. I don't care. This is so sad. So sad. You can barely win over here. So sad. We've lost 150,000, basically. Versus 300,000. Pathetic. Quite pathetic. Up them out. And... Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there's not really much we can do about this. We can't expand anymore. Crisis in Nanjing. Good God, these guys make us take forever doing this. You find them, you kill them. Kill every single last one of them. Don't even let them live. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No organization for these guys. I'm not stopping the attacks at this point. We gotta finish these guys off. This is taking forever. State welfare? Sure. How could you get poverty? Probably, yeah, it's getting better as well. Better, 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 better. 9 billion, that's not too bad. 
growth, not too bad. Thank God that's over. My goodness, I always hate taking out the Far East. It just takes way too long, in my opinion. And let's read it fine. Finally. Let's insert excerpt influence. And hopefully we'll get some influence every single day. That'll be good. Even though we are definitely absolutely not ready for this at all. Holy crap. But at least they're dead. And we don't we don't have to fight the WRF. The Siberian Mandate. Slightly decreased scoring times. Well, too bad. Uh, we'll do the Atomic Cage. If you like to be, read about these ones, please go right ahead. I like doing this ones first just because we can. If you like to read about the Port of Magadon Capture, please go right ahead as well. Alright, so with that in mind. Oh, we can't even build anything else. God dang it. Cool. Just keep doing all that stuff for now. That'll be good. And into Wonders, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead as well. That's fine. Military Intervention, no. How do we get more influence? Events drop tanks, cool. But at least we got quite a bit of manpower now. That's nice. Uh, let's keep doing some engineering stuff. We need to definitely do some engineering or industry stuff. Yeah, that's disappointing that we can't invest anything else here. Quite disappointing. Um, so there's no point in even raising up the construction then if we can't build any more factories. At least for now. We will be able to soon enough, but not yet. Alright, tanks. You were okay in some places here. Okay. Not great, but okay. Uh, let's see. Really, the infantry guy is the best on attack. So, Nestor. Hello, hello. Oh, Omsk is going to be a pain in the butt to take out, probably. And then we'll go with close uh, factories. No uranium problem. Eh, I'll do this one. No, yeah, we'll do that one. Ah, now we got that stuff. Okay, let's do all this stuff, I guess. Improve our research facilities. Regional integration. Regional development's going to be done. Nice. Uh, study foreign designs. We get bonuses to research. Yes, academic base. And study foreign designs because we can. We have a port. Not bad. We have 212 billion in GDP. I don't think I need to see this, guys. Thank you. Cool. And improve anti tank. We might as well. And then even more industry stuff after this. Cool. Keep building, 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 building. Okay, now we can build some stuff here. That's good. Civvies are first. Always civvies first. And then we could use more millies. How strong are these guys? No such thing as... Wait. Propaganda, huh? That's a lot of manpower. That's a whole crap ton of... Oh my god! That's so much! 7, 2, and 5 elites? That, is that like a 30 combo with division? Holy crud. Um, we're going to do this one as well. We're going to need way more divisions than this. Hopefully we can find more division, more manpower, because this is not going to be very good for us. Maintenance companies? Uh, we might actually do that then. Uh, tank divisions, you guys be, got to be bigger. And we have to invest in a massive Air Force then. They have way too many divisions for us to really contest them effectively that well. Uh, maintenance companies would be good. Logistics as well. There you go. Fourth group stream. And that'll be fine. Civilian budget boost doesn't matter to keep boosting it up. Construction doesn't really matter too much right now either. Hmm. Approach scientists might as well. And then after this, uh, I think we'll just start the Siberian Mandate. Oh, if you like to build better army professionals, please go right ahead. have. But after years <clears throat> of struggle, the unthinkable has been achieved. The vastness of Russia Siberia has been reunified under one flag. So securing this much of Russia has been no easy feat. To secure a hold, we have to fight off every d devil of Russia's past, from monarchist fanatics to fascist thugs to Soviet holdouts. We have vanquished them all and now stand triumphant as the masters of the East and the rightful government of all of Russia. <clears throat> The conquest of Siberia has taken its toll on us. Russia remains fractured, but even now we are already one of the largest nations on Earth, and administering a territory this massive requires a strong and stable government. We should take this opportunity to secure our hold and to ensure that our administration is prepared for the tasks that lie ahead. The final reunification with the West is near, one way or another. We will not be caught unprepared. <clears throat> and this is going to be a difficult war. We already can tell. What the heck? Come on, gang. Come on, mouse. Come on, mouse. Um, oh, we forgot to do this stuff. That sucks. Uh, get more max factories in the state first, though. Yeah, this is going to be a really sucky war. I'll be, I swear, man. That's going to really suck. Cool. Siberian Mandate. I guess for now, you can always put these ones at the bottom. Yeah, we're going to need to build a lot of things, aren't we? Root out the remnants. 
The Russian people are grateful to have a strong democratic government ruling over them at last, but there's still a few troublemakers who wish to overthrow us. These various extremists, whether they be fascists or communists or anarchists or monarchists, are all unified by their hatred for our government. These radicals held low enough profiles to be missed by the first rounds of crackdowns and arrests we made whenever we defeated their bosses, but now they've returned to make trouble we must put a stop to it. There are no reason to assume that work before won't work again. A combination of surveillance, sabotage, arrest, and anti-radical propaganda will be enough to cripple the various terrorist societies that have cropped up across Siberia and turned the public firmly against their dis uh, divisive messages. The den of radicals. Pokrushkin tossed a report onto his desk in disgust. It was a general overview of the situation in the far eastern Siberia, Re reading through had dashed all traces of optimism he had felt about the region. It wasn't all bad to be fair. Control on the port town of Magadan finally gave him access to the sea, and with a little investment, Irkutsk could become a major economic and industrial hub, but aside from a few scattered bright spots, like those that the report was nothing but bad news. The Far East had always been difficult to administer, even for a united Russian nation. Now he had to attempt the same task with far less resources than the Empire or the Union had been able to field, and on top of everything else, there was the main topic of the report, partisans. Based on early reports alone, Pokrushkin's security experts were telling him that there were no less than eight organized radical terrorist organizations operating in the Far East, and possibly as many as a dozen. They all came in all stripes, fascists, communists, monarchists, anarchists, zealots, Cossacks, separatists, and more. The only reason that they hadn't already collapsed the entire East into partisan warfare was because they spent as much time fighting each other as the central government. The report warned that might not be the case forever. The longer they are allowed to exist, the more likely that it is like like-minded groups will form a common front against a new reformed Russian Federation. This cannot allow to happen. Bokrushkin picked up the phone and started dialing the number. If consolidating Central Siberia had taught him anything, it was that there was only one way to deal with radicals. They were so wrapped up in their own mis meaningless theories and ideologies that they barely even lived in the real world, and that made them too dangerous to tolerate. They would be dragged out of their holes and brought into the light where the people of Russia could see them for what they were. Not brave partisans, but desperate terrorists with no place in the new Russia. There's no room for mercy here. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this and cut you guys back down. Put you underneath Field Marshal. Wow, these guys look really bad now. Yeah, it's not going to be easy war. It's going to be a really bad war for us. Oh, I could put, put them under there, but that's fine. Max entrenchment. I usually don't like putting them under there, but he probably won't learn too much in time. Good. Now, everyone has orders here to do that. And you guys have, uh, I guess, some orders. Eh, yeah, I guess Sartar is okay. Do that so we can just throw them on the line. Cool. Alright, so that'll be good. And we're building some factories too. And so the new territories, we get more stability. It's almost impossible to explain how vast and sparsely populated Siberia is. Outside of a few urban centers like Irkutsk and Novosibirsk, it is a millions of square kilometers of wilderness and scattered villages. This is especially true of the newly integrated eastern regions. Even the Tatars and Soviets never fully extended their administrations over this region, and the eastern warlords never came close to matching what they did accomplish. The task of integrating this territory has been left to us. The urban centers of the east will form a nucleus of a new administrative web that will cover all of eastern Siberia. Every town and village, every isolated hamlet, all of them will be assigned to districts and administrative regions, and each will have administrators and politicians appointed to oversee them and represent them within our government. No more will the Far East be an isolated backwater forgotten by the Russian government. It's an integral part of the Russian nation, and will be treated as such hunters of men, after we get some research done. <clears throat> the truck rolled down the dirt road through the forest, jostling the men inside. A few smokes in silence, filling the back of the truck with the smell of cigarettes. Some slept, some their snores inaudible over the rumbling engine. Fyodor was seated at the rear of the truck, staring out of the window. Next to him, Lev continued to jabber incessantly. Do we have anything down here? No, we don't. Okay. Hey, Fyodor, how do you know when you've killed a communist? I don't know, Lev. How? Fyodor said. When he starts to bleed out, he calls his own blood reactionary and tells it to read more theory. Lev laughed at his own joke, though Fyodor was unamused seeing this. Lev tried again. How do you know when you've killed a fascist? Fyodor glared at him. When he starts to bleed out, he calls you a Jew dude and says his blood is too strong to leave his body. Once more, Lev cackled at his own lack of his lack of wit, and once more, Fyodor remains silent. When Lev finished laughing, Fyodor spoke. Have you killed... Ever killed anyone, Lev? Lev looked at him confused. Maybe. I fired my gun in combat a lot, but I'm not sure. Well, have you ever watched anyone bleed out? No. Well, I have. I've watched five men die. A communist, two anarchists, a fascist, and a Cossack. None of them talked about race or theory while they were dying. They all just cried for their mothers. Yeah, I don't want to get involved with these guys, because that they have so many divisions. Jesus Christ. 94. Ah! No, they don't have a lot of tanks. They do a few planes here and there, but... Um, yeah, they got a crap ton of stuff. 400,000 manpower to shoot and smash. They struck at midnight. The raid proceeded by the blinding light of flares scattered around the building as a soldier sprang the trap. Machine guns sprayed death, barely feet off the ground as the infantry sprang into action. Pushing towards the structure in a textbook assault, ducking into cover just before a dozen slugs tore through the space that he had formerly occupied, the air went out of his chest. <clears throat> 
He took a deep few breaths and blinked his eyes once, twice, three times. Good enough? Firing a few bullets in the general direction of the structure, the sergeant rolled left to join the rest of his unit, already going through the motions of the battle drill. The screaming, shooting, and dying lasted all for five minutes before the white handkerchiefs went up and the black uh, shirt figure stepped out in surrender, bodies surrounding the once picturesque cabin. As he counted losses and took in sight, Ivanov gave the sorry looking black shirts a glare of contempt. For all the enthusiasm for violence, he had seen anarchists handle themselves better than these jack booted, jack -booted thugs. Looters and criminals do not make an army. Cool. Election season? Oh, we'll get there eventually. Uh, let's go with address the uranium problem next. Just so we can have time to research or talk about more, a few more things, like reform our commitments. With a sudden expansion of our territory and our associated bands on the world stage, eyes across the world are studying us, watching for our next move to see what it signals. We must show them that we are still the same government they have learned to trust. Our impending reunification of Russia has not changed any of our agreements, and we are still happy to do business with the other nations of the world. The acquisition of Russia's longest coastline and several development or developed ports have made the matter of trade much easier. The nations and companies who have already invested in Russia are excitedly offered, offering to expand operations further. Further. Meanwhile, from Tokyo to Washington, we have gained this, uh, the attention of government and business alike. It's time to double down on our message while everyone is watching. Russia is open for business. The last gasp. Uh, Captain Ivan Lebrantov led his men through the field or the streets of Irkutsk in the dead of night. His men moved as a well-oiled machine through the darkness. They were deep in the industrial district of Irkutsk, closing in on the workers' housing that died at the outskirts of the factories. Their mission was a simple one to root out the elements of Yogurt's NKVD that had survived the strife in the Far East. As he approached the target, he motioned for his men to split into two teams. His team would breach the front of the enemy structure and abandon apartment complex. The second team, under the command of Lieutenant Ugalev, would be tasked with breaching the rear entry and preventing the enemy from making a retreat. Ivan approached the doorway into the building unmolested and had his men stacked up on the doors. His men entered the building and were met with an eerie silence. The men went about securing the first floor and found nothing. There was no sign that this floor had been inhabited in years. Ivan left three men behind in the lobby to act as a rear guard and press forward towards their stairwell. This would be the most dangerous part of the operation, transversing the stairwell into any, the second and third floors. He crept up the stairway slowly, keeping watch for any sort of traps. It was as he ascended the last step that he heard the gunfire from the base of the stairs. They'd use the elevator shaft to get behind him. Ivan began to shout orders, but was cut off as he had to die for cover, as soldiers on the second floor opened fire. He was only able to take the rare pot shots at his assailants. He was able to drop one before being hit in the shoulders. The rifle clattered from his grasp and fell down the stairwell. He cursed and drew a sidearm, only to be per perforated by the fire from one from a man on the stairs above him. Ivan's body tumbled onto his men below, before the NKVD could celebrate. The rear team made their appearance. The communists were defeated, but it was a pyrrhic victory at best. What a giant mess. Partisan activity decreases. It's been reported to the central government that the efforts of the National Anti-Partisan Task Force has continued to show considerable effect. Across the territories in which they have been deployed, exec uh, executed operations against remnants of, of both the RFP as well as various communist organs have proven highly successful with only uh, reported failures, several reported failures. Large numbers of insurgents and dissidents have been captured or killed, enormous quantities of material, excuse me, have been captured, and insurgent leadership has been greatly compromised. Concurrently, elements of state government have returned to or been established in areas declared secure from partisan influence. This is not only a return to life to normal for millions of our citizens, but greatly strengthening our control of and extraction from the regions in question. However, we also must take care to not grow complacent. Though activity has, through vigorous and sometimes bloody action, decreased, fanatical elements do remain and they are to be considered extremely dangerous. We must stay the course until our lands are secure and purged of el partisan elements for good. The campaign, of course, must continue. So we're doing reformer commitments. We could do this stuff, but we'll get there in just a little bit. I think what we'll do next is election season. It is no secret that the co-rulers of our nation do not get along publicly. Pokrishkin and Shushkin represent a united front, but it is well known that they have agreed on little for years. The two men have been able to set aside their differences and cooperate until now, but with the recent acquisition of Eastern Siberia and the prospect of national reunification growing greater by the day, their disagreements have become too great to ignore. The co-rulers have agreed that the only way to settle this is to let the Russian people decide. Actually, if you want to read this one first, please go ahead. We're going to just let it go on as we continue reading about this. Shushkin is campaigning on a platform of reform and democracy, <clears throat> pledging to create a truly equal and free Russian federation with a government elected by and subservient to the people before all else. Pokrushkin has opted for a more conservative approach, stating his commitment to democracy by reiterating that Russia is in need of a strong government capable of uniting and defending its people. Only time will tell which message is more popular. Oh boy. I wonder which one we're going to go with, just because we're heavily leaning towards one way already, so... Um, what do we want? Oh, uh, let's get some more. We're going to need max out engineers for this war. Project Abakan, success, good. Uh, TBK, TKB double O double eleven. Assault rifles passed its field test and now officially ready to begin mass production. And initial concerns about the rifle's lightweight construction being too fragile for combat have been dispelled after the prototype was adjusted to increase durability while keeping the weight low. 
riflemen. Tests of the accuracy have found the, the rifle to be good for engagements at close and medium ranges, although accuracy does become a concern at long ranges. This is not an issue as the rifle is intended for deployment with our air mobile infantry or trained for close quarters firefights rather than long range battles. The commanders of our air mobile divisions are already clamoring to receive the first shipments of the new guns. With a dedicated AR design specifically for helicopter borne infantry finally available, we are anticipating a significant increase in the combat ability of some of our most elite and specialized troops. A soldier is only as good as his gun. Cool. Division attack? Yes, please. Some more, some more supply consumption is pretty bad, but whatever. All right, cool. They're doing that stuff. And I guess Project Prodokia. Nice. Success? I love the success. Even though someone sounds like it's probably going to be a failure, just because, well, it can't be successful at everything. It is what it is. Cool. Election season. Uh, let's see. Spreading the SIP plan? That'd be kind of nice to do. Before the war, Central Siberia was the site of one of the greatest planned industrial developments in history. The SIB plan transformed a backwards region into an industrial hub and center of production. All our newly acquired eastern territories were mostly untouched by the SIB plan, and the minuscule industrial pales in comparison to that of our heartland. The east must be brought up to standard. We shall develop the Far East the same way the Soviets developed inland Siberia. A program of state plant industrial projects will serve as a foundation for new production centers in the east. We will go further than the Soviets, though. While the SIB plan was strictly managed by the state, our hours would collapse with our local corporations to help establish strong private industry in the Far East. The federal election. As the elections for the Federation ramp up, it's becoming clear that despite Alexander Pokrushkin's prior political ascendancy, that he's been challenged to the that very ascendancy by none other than Vasily Shushkin, the mayor of Varna. Both men occupy highly prestigious and very important positions within the Federation, but over the years have come to present two very different currents of thought in regards to the Federation itself. Alexander Pokrushkin, the man that has saved the Federation from itself and engineered its highly successful ascent, has campaigned on a platform of economic ex expansion, now National stability and measured patriotism. Vasily Shushkin, on the other hand, represents the opposition to Pokrushkin's monopoly on power. Comprised of locals from Barnov, supporters of a liberal democratic federation, and dissenters turned traitors from Pokrushkin's camp. Shushkin's platform is focused around political reform and an emphasis on return to the roots, culturally and politically, especially in regards to the remembering the origin of the federation and the state's tyranny. As each respective political player begins their campaign, only time will tell which one of these two will come out on top. The campaign is Pokrushkin, Shushkin will probably go Shushkin for this one. And then, uh, research speed is nice. Poverty rate. National priority projects. It's clear everywhere you look that Russia is rebuilding. Shops are opening. Vacant buildings are being filled. And new ones are being built. Shelves are being fully stocked for the first time ever. And the people are going back to work. But there's still much work to do. We've come far, but there's still a long way to go before Russia is fully ready to retake its place on the modern global stage. It is our duty as a motherland's government to help her get there. To assess the recovery and rebuilding efforts, four programs have been selected for government funding and support, dubbed the National Priority Projects by the media, that focus on improving public health, access to education, housing availability and quality, and agriculture development. By supporting improvements in these four vital areas, we are progressing towards a point where Russia is not only just reunified, but rebuilt and prosperous as well, at last. Oh, look at this. Shushkin, huh? Shushkin campaign. Meet with Democratic activists. Ooh, talk to sympathetic officers. Hold speech in Bonal. Um, we get more stability, which I do like. Decrease support for Pokrushkin by a small amount. Okay. Cool. Oh, we have only a few days left. Let's get the one that has 30, maybe? That'd be kind of cool. Talks to sympathetic officers. There we go. Try that one. A meeting with the military. Ahmed Khan Sultan was surprised by the size of Vasily Shushkin's office. He had imagined that the man challenging Pokrushkin for the presidency of the Federation would have a corner office with large windows framing an impressive desk and rows of file cabinets and bookshelves along the walls. Shushkin's workplace was not that. It was not quite a walk-in closet, but it wasn't far off. Shushkin noticed... The military man looking around with a puzzled expression and chuckled. I know it isn't much, but when you're challenging the incumbent president from within his own government, it isn't a surprise when your accommodations suddenly get downgraded. Sultan nodded. My current office has a nice view of the river. I suppose it shouldn't get too attached to it in case this meeting becomes public knowledge. Shushkin grinned and nodded. Speaking of, I have another meeting in a few minutes, so let's get down to business. I don't want you to view risk that view for nothing. <clears throat> Very well, Sultan said. Holding on a file he held under his arm, this is a list of officers in the military that I believe might be sympathetic to our cause. Take a look at that and let me know what you want me to contact. Shushkin opened the file and glanced over the list of names. Do you trust these men, he asked. Sultan hesitated before he spoke. They're all talented and loyal to the Federation. For some I trust more than others, which I mentioned in the file, but I think all of them are at least potentially persuadable. Shushkin nodded. Very good. That's all for now. I'll get back to you tomorrow with a list of who I want to contact first. Sultan turned to walk out of the tiny office. There was work to be done. Time to find out where the military stands. And we have about two days left. That's fine. We can let time go on just a little bit first. And so we can do another one. Denounce corruption. Or this one. More Vasily. Meet with Democratic Activists. And then we'll do... Oh, we can't do that one yet. Oh. Well, let's do this one then. Cool. 
funding the Central Bureau, Design Bureau, but expanding the coalition. When Shushkin opened the door to the Met Khan Sultan's office, he found the former ace staring out of the window that overlooked the river. Wordlessly, Shushkin walked over to, to stand beside him. Both men stared out over the winding waterway for a few seconds before the Sultan spoke. I really will miss this view. I've spent many hours ta taking it in, thinking about myself or or anything or nothing. At least the sacrifice shall not have been in vain. Shushkin glanced over at him curiously. Sultan continued, I found 15 other officers who are willing to endorse you publicly. Most are from the army, but a few of them from the Air Force, and we even got one promising candidate from the Naval Academy. Now eight of them, including the ones from the Air Force, are only willing to endorse as a group. Strength in numbers, I suppose, but an endorsement is an endorsement. This should be enough to show the people that the military isn't 100% behind Pope Shushkin, and it'll help you with being criticized uh, for being too weak on foreign policy. Shushkin grinned. 15, he murmured. I thought we'd be lucky to get 10. The army started playing second fiddle to the Air Force, Sultan replied, and the Air Force wants to hedge its bets in case you win. Shushkin nodded. Thank you, Ahmed Khan. You've done better than I could have ever hoped. If you win, if I win, you can have whatever office you'd like. Sultan turned his eyes back to the river, a small smile on his face. This one will do just fine, sir. When Russia was fractured into dozens of warlords, the armies and pilots of Nova Sibiris could only had one advantage over their foes. While they could not match the numbers of fanaticism of their opponents, they knew that they were always fighting with the best equipment Russia had offered. This was solely because of the CDB, and the fanatic are fantastic, <clears throat> innovative weaponry it produced. The days of warlords are still behind us, but the Bureau still proves its worth. Its staff of designers, engineers, scientists, and entrepreneurs all working around the clock to make the next breakthrough that will change how wars are fought forever. We must increase our investment in the Bureau, now that we have access to more wealth and resources than ever before. If they could create groundbreaking new aircraft on a shoestring budget, imagine what they will be able to do with the resources of all of Russia at their disposal. Very good. And we should be able to win this the election pretty handily, so we don't need to worry about it too much. Oh, we'll have it done in a few months. Advanced development phase will be next, which will be pretty nice. And then we'll do that one, but uh, we could probably go ahead and read, expand the Volk Komats. Controlling Siberia and all the people who live in it has always been a challenge for the past Russian government. And it will be no doubt be a challenge for us as well. This is made no easier by the fact that Eastern Siberia is now crawling with ex-military men who fought with for one leader or another that now find themselves with nothing to do but grow bitter and resentful of our new rule. These men could be dangerous, but also present an opportunity. Now let's go ahead and click on that one real quick, and then keep reading. The Volkomats are a system of military commissars that has proved successful in maintaining our control of the nation and keeping extremist organizations on the run. Expanding the system to encompass a new territory would help to lock down the East. Recruiting disaffected army officers, black shirts, and NKVD agents into the Volkomat will give us a way to put our skills of these unpleasant people to work for us while placing them firmly under our control. Very nice. Now let's go ahead and do advanced development stage. We can do this stuff, but we're looking pretty good already for now. He is making his moves. So I guess the next one we'll do is do one of these. So, All right, and it is 1970. It's almost 71. Let's get better artillery because we're going to need some really strong artillery to help defend against these guys because it's not going to be very good for us. Holy crap. We did make a few more divisions so far. Order 44. Cool. I guess we can delete one since we don't have any more manpower. That's fine. Oh, don't delete that one. Delete this one. And there goes that manpower once again. Sucks, but oh well. Appeal to the common people. A Barnall rally. Very, very nice. Our Eastern Bastion. The poor city of Magadan used to be so insignificant, it didn't even appear on maps of Eastern Russia. During the decades of anarchy, it became un it became important because it was Russia's largest unoccupied port, but even then, after years of improvements made by various warlords who have controlled it, it's still barely up to the task of serving as a primary port. Rebuilding Russia required doing a significant amount of trading business with the nations of the world, and our ability to, to trade with them is limited by our port's capacity. Both business and government officials have been urging us to invest more into Magadan and to complete its transformation into Russia's new doorstep to the world. Ask and they shall receive. Magadan will become worthy of the responsibility thrust upon it, and we shall finally have full, unfettered access to the global marketplace. Nice. Get some naval documents, which doesn't really matter too much, but that's okay. Even more engineers. We have to maximize them, because our entrenchment has to be as high as possible, but future into the Commissariat. Cool. Our Eastern Bastion. Life had never been easy for Ru for Rus Ruslan or his family, not under the communists, not under the fascists, and not so at least, so far at least under the new regime of the Federation. They'd always been poor and extreme, and Rus Ruslan had watched his, as his father, uncle, and his older brother work themselves into the ground, trying to keep their farm working. He had thought that to be his eventual fate as well, but then accompanying his father into the village to sow the produce, he had seen the, posture, the poster. Men were needed, it said, to fill out the many new commissariats of the Federation had established throughout the Far East. To help distribute supplies, provide order, and of course secure the land for the state, it also offered Pay. pay far in excess of what Russian or Russland could earn selling vegetables, and so, after seeing his father to market, he had walked towards this enlistment both booth set up in the square. His father had not been happy, but he had, in the end, understood Russland was trying to secure a better future for himself, and the man could not begrudge his son that, allowing him to depart with his blessing. Russland could only hope that he was successful. A boy departs, will a man return? Perhaps. Appeal to the common people. And, let's see, we have that stuff, of course. 
God, I am not worried. Cold. Oh, crap. It is 1971. 1971. Oh, goodness gracious. Get that manpower. And forts are nice, but... Um, manpower. Oh, it's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's not good. Get more factory output, then. Can we build any more civvies? Yes, we can. Um, just build. Uh, we, we have so much infrastructure. Holy crap. That's nice. Obviously, it's not complete yet, but that's okay. Well, that's all the civvies we could do. Hey, those would be done. I'll be pretty done quickly, though. Um, I'm not going to get that done yet. We did make a few more divisions, which is nice. This is not going to go very well for us. The port of profit. Oh, but, oh, look at all the stuff we got. Look at that. Oh, that's so awesome. Look at all the new technology. Awesome. That's actually really cool. A discipline force. Um, let's do Chase of Sun first. Having received significant investment into development under the rule of the Federation, the seaside city of Magadan is transformed from a backwater second-rate harbor braved only by the most daring of sailors into a truly international port welcoming to all, but especially those with money in their pockets. Every day, ships from all around the Pacific carrying sailors and traders from all around the world stop at the docks, unloading or unloading cargo in or out of the storages with hired help always available from the peoples of Magadan if they need it. This success in its function as a port has made Magadan a key part of the Federation economy, bringing great wealth into Siberia and enriching all involved in the industry. At the same time, the promises of riches and greatness has attracted many from across the Federation to the city, making Magadan grow and even blossom. The addition of a new significant port to those already existing along the Pacific has also caused an increase in trade in the region, benefiting the partners of the Federation as well. In the end, it seems everyone wins. At least for now. At least for now. And we have how much we have? Not bad. Uh, close it for now. We could see this up. I don't really feel like it yet. And, ooh. I think we're doing pretty well. Well, Christian is making moves for now. A disciplined force. Our military is one of the best in Russia. Our reunification of Siberia is proof enough of that for anyone. But being the best in Russia does not mean we are ready to take on the world. So far, our military has fought bandits and warlords and semi-industrialized regional rivals, but we have yet to take on a full modern ready war, a war-ready military power, and considering the dangerous state of the world, we may act sooner than we like. This technological gap between our forces of those of the Germans and the Japanese is shrinking due to the heroic efforts of our design bureaus, but technology alone does not make a modern army. It does not matter how good the gun of the man is, too afraid to fire up. Our army does not is not a disorganized rabble, but its discipline still leaves room for improvement. We will see that these men or th these improvements are made, and our men are refined into hardened warriors ready for conflicts ahead. Let's hope so, because it's not going to be good for us. Uh, military intervention. Hopefully, they go to war with Kazakhstan first, because this is going to be. Pro I'm going to say probably a lot of bad words here. Oh boy, a discipline force will be good. Hopefully, this gets done quickly. Is anything else going to be done here soon? No, probably not really. Agricultural, maybe. Research facilities, probably not. So basically, we're not going to get any more society development, which kind of sucks. We're going to do that one if we really wanted to. Prepare for the unification war. Might as well. Uh, go and do um, air bases, I guess. What a speech of Barnell. The Barnell Rally. On a normal night, the Barnell Theater would be hosting a local musician or amateur dramatic uh, company debuting a new production, and it would soon draw a decent audience of the residents of the city whose name the theater bore. But this was no normal night. The main event was not scheduled to start for two more hours, and there were already lines around the block. As soon as the doors opened, people excitedly filled in, or filed in, taking any seat they could find. Within half an hour of opening its doors, the Barnall had to close them again. For the first time in decades, every seat in the house was full. Even the standing room in the back was packed solid. The excited chatter of the audience suddenly quieted as the lights winced. Uh, winked, the then dimmed a sign that things were about to begin. From the backstage, Vasily Shushkin took one last deep breath, patted the speech in his pocket, and walked out into the light. The silent theater uh, immediately roared back to life, all 2,500 people there clapping, cheering for him that before he even said a word. As he took the podium, he couldn't help but grin like an idiot. Thank you, Barnall, he said, the speakers allowing him to make himself heard of the clamor. The speech was supposed to last 30 minutes, but with the audience cheering and chanting, it stretched to almost an hour. Additional speakers outside the theater delivered Shushkin's words to even larger crowds outside on the streets. The next morning, the headline in every major newspaper in the Federation was about Shushkin's rally. Most doubted it as a huge victory, a massive sign of enthusiasm for the opposition candidate. Even papers loyal to Pokrushkin couldn't help but acknowledge that the rally had been a success for his opponent. We will need a bigger venue next time. And then they're towards the glorious future. To be Russian, oh boy, oh crap, uh, these days is to watch destiny unfold before our eyes. It is a it is to see a nation rising from the ashes like a phoenix, born from the most unlikely of members. No one could have guessed an ace pilot leading a ragtag band of military men and disaffected local politicians would establish the next government of Russia? Who would have guessed a warlord army operating Novosibirsk would reunite the entirety of eastern Russia against the 
the odds of Federations persisted and now stood strong, but its final victory drawing near. To be Russian these days is to stand at the middle point of a long road. Behind you are decades of suffering and violence that have only been overcome. Ahead lies great uncertainty and the potential for conflict to put all the hardships of the past to shame, but there is also the potential for something brighter, something better. Russia has come so far so quickly. The only thing left to do is to keep pushing forward to whatever lies at the end of the road. I am not ready for this. Oh, boy, baby. Baby boy. Oh, man. My only hope is that our Air Force does very, very well against the hordes of Mr. Mario over there. Oh. He's got a little bit more influence. That's fine. Whatever. Hey, we have a little bit of manpower, which does... Wow, we build super fast. Reassure me a little bit. Let's grab some... We build a lot of radar here, too. Nice. Build some of that, too. Um, Barnall. Like, holy crap, we must be building a lot of forts. Oh, look at that. Level 10 forts. Oh, that's so nice. They won't hopefully attack us. But Commissariat training? Not bad. Oh, we can't do that one yet. Oh. Oh, we need to do leadership training. Okay, cool. A hard, long life of farming would certainly have prepared Russland for the hardships of military training, or so he had thought. The reality was far different indeed. The man at the enlistment station had all been smiles. His boot camp instructor was all frowns, along with shouting and anger besides. He woke every morning in the pitch dark, marched until he was exhausted, instructed and then tested on the lessons afterwards, shoveled as much food down as possible, and fell into an exhausted sleep, only to repeat the process the next day. Despite the hardship, however, Russland could not say he hated the experience. He was still learning skills both military and organizational, and was making many friends besides. Friends from all over the region from areas he had only heard, heard of in passing, and they were fan fascinating. He could not wait until he completed training and got a chance to see the lands of whatever region he was assigned to. He knew now that this was to be his destiny, he, his career, the better future he had hoped for. Enthusiasm is always to be valued. A writer's musings. Vasily Shushkin was many things, a writer, actor, poet, mayor, and politician. He climbed his way from the t son of peasants in Altay to become the second most powerful man in the Federation, the champion of democracy. However, as he sat at home, waiting for the results to come in, all he could feel was trepidation. Months of worth of campaigning, dozens of speeches, rallies, and meetings. Week of courting corporate representatives and sympathetic. Siloviki had led to this. He crisscrossed Siberia from Magadan to Kolpashevo. And now the only thing he could do was wait. Shushkin stared at the bottle of vodka on his desk, resisting the temptation to pour himself a drink. But Krishkin and his allies would use every trick in their book to keep themselves in power, and all he could do was hope that they would that the will of the people would be enough. The tallies came in agonizingly slowly. Shushkin's heart soaring at every positive result and sinking with every poor showing, but they were clear. Putting the bottle aside, Shushkin made preparations to move to Nova Sibiris. The people had spoken, and they wanted to pull Krishkin out. Democracy breathes. Oh, boy. And let's take... Oh, look at this. Nice. Anything else? Diff oh, we got the stuff in the middle. That's pretty cool. Uh, oh, ooh, when's it change? Democratizatia. All right. Curb the corporations. Dreams of the Federation. Let's do this one first since we already read it. So, cool. I think we already read this one. Yes. Yes. Very cool. I just got that one. By this point, we're dangerously close to going to war with these guys, so we'll see what happens. Winds of change. The people have spoken, and their will is clear. After years of rule, Alexander Pokrushkin has finally tasted defeat at the ballot box, and Vasily Shushkin has been elected to lead the Federation towards to a new, brighter future. Shushkin and his supporters have announced plans for a bold new wave of liberalization and reforms that they say will finally bring freedom and democracy to all of Russia. While Shushkin's supporters are celebrating the victory, those have backed Pokrushkin's continued rule already voicing their concerns. The leaders of the military have expressed res reservations about a weakening of the central government, and the boards of Russia's new mega corporations expected it would be much more difficult to deal with a government that is truly beholden to the interests of the people. Let them complain all they like. They shall be the first tyrants to fall before the might of a free Russia, but not the last. Uh, we already got that. That's nice. We could probably even use more recon, honestly. We're going to need every advantage we can possibly get against Mr. Mario, man. We're doing pretty well building. Like, holy Crap. Okay, I thought we'd build them all. Okay, that's okay. Uh, go ahead and repair those two if we need to. That should happen pretty darn quickly as well, so... Oh, my goodness. Oh, and actually we got... Let's see. Research and development done. We have one of these done. It was a success. I'm not sure what happened, actually, so... My bad. But it is what it is. I just want to keep speeding this campaign up just a little bit more. There goes a shot of Iran. Election results. Very cool. The Almaty Airborne. But let's go and grab this next one first. Observing as his men went about their interminable duties, General Vasily Margalov 
was knew that if nothing else he had at least made his soldiers ready for what was to come the federation was strong but these men were stronger the federation stood ready to at last reunite the motherland by any means necessary and these men would lead the charge into further conflict of that goal they truly become a unit he could be proud of as a father of his children one of them walked up to him, delivering a perfectly crisp salute before beginning to deliver a scheduled report. Margala could barely make out the words, however. Too lost in his own thoughts, as confident as he was in their ability, only more hardship awaited them now as they began to move west. He was confident that they were ready, of course. The question was, would they be ready enough? There was no way of knowing if it was the best of Russia's soldiers that could win the wars to come, and more importantly, which of them would make it back alive? As the man before him finished his report, Margalov nodded and sent him off, to be alone with his thoughts and anxieties. A father worries for his children just as he is proud of them. Demokratizacja? Cool, but we'll read about that as soon as we get some better artillery. It is still 71, so not too bad. Now let's get some of that stuff. <clears throat> Shushkin's victory is a triumph for the cause of Russian freedom, but is only the first step on the road towards democracy. But Kushkin and his toadies have spent years building up their powers and doing their darndest to turn Russia into a one-party state once more. Undoing their efforts will take time, and we must begin with small reforms to prepare the nation for the great changes it has in store. Soon the government will launch a new initiative called Demokratizia. Democ democratization. Starting at the local level, the people of Russia will be now be able to elect their leaders and representatives. Once a sufficient permanent election structure is in place, we will be able to organize regularly scheduled elections at last. Other earlier reforms will include passing term limits and preparing to implement a separation of powers among the various departments of government. Freedom's champion. Oh, crap. Before we unpause, though, let's read this first. The winds have changed. The second president of the Siberian Federation turned towards his rapt audience, the thousands eagerly waiting the first words of the inaugural address. He didn't have a prepared speech per se. He couldn't fix the country's many problems with a professional speechwriter, no. This was just the start of a new kind of administration. The people had suffered long enough. First from Bukharin's authoritarianism and mismanagement, and then from the CSR and their misguided idealism who had gotten so many killed in their failed wars. Finally, Grushkin and his corporate backers, who in their endless pursuit of stability and wealth had forgotten the average Russian. There would be no more of that not on his watch. Some may have sympathized with his cause, Sibir and their backers, but Fenix, Titan, and the rest of them were venal, corrupt, and heartless. The rule by what hundred would be dictators. To heck with them. The supremacy of the corporations, the rise of the Siloviki, the bastardization of the Federation's ideals, those have been the final straws and the acts that which made good people stand up and retake their destiny. And so he spoke, fellow citizens, I have not come to begin a revolution, I have come to fulfill the ideals of which have not been forgotten. The crowd cheered wildly. He smiled, basking in the love of his fellow citizens. It would be a long, hard road, but President Shushkin knew he could make things right again. The winds have changed. Very cool. We're not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready to die here yet. Oh boy. Now, are they not attacking me because we built level 10 forts in a lot of areas? Not everywhere, obviously, but... And, like, the southern part here? Oh boy. I wonder if we would actually be... Oh, we don't even have... Oh boy. We're missing tanks. That's pretty much it. Everything else we're doing quite well on. I don't want to see interceptors. No, thank you. Fires are fine. Tactical bombers. No, thank you. Okay, that makes it a little easier for us. Uh, I really don't want to attack. I really do not want to attack. Maybe I really want to attack. Maybe I really want to attack. Why is it so easy? I'm going to be very careful regardless. I, I don't trust these guys. Hold on. Hold the phone. Why is it so... Mm, I think he's baiting us in. Uh, honestly, we can't support this many tanks to get rid of one of these divisions then. Um, mm, I don't trust this. Well, since we're here anyways, I guess we could read the next one. Curve the corporations. A new piece of legislation has been introduced recently that put in place some token limitations on the activities of the corporations. The limits are trivial at best and mostly have to do with implementing the bare minimum of government oversight on stock trading, but the proposed law has still attracted significant attention from the people and the corporations for that one reason. It used to be the case that legislation like this would be shot down immediately before even going to a vote, but this is no longer the case. President Shushkin will place his full support beyond this law and encourage his supporters to do the same on paper. It really is little more than a token effort, but it'll signal to the whole nation that. Shushkin is no crony of the corporations. We may not be able to end their influence right away, but we can make it clear to the world that the days of Russian companies exploiting Russian people for their foreign money will soon be over. Yeah, I, I don't trust this. Why is it... I mean, so don't get me wrong, I like this, but why is it like this? What's going on? Why is it so easy right now? I don't understand this. I think this has me very worried. It should not be this easy.
As soon as we hit, hit the first difficulty, though, I'm going to go ahead and retreat, probably. You know, be balanced. Now it looks like they're stacking the bodies on the line. That is not good. So far, pretty good. Not too bad. And there's a lot of divisions there. Cool. A hundred thousand losses. I mean, that's nothing for Mr. Mario Man. Uh oh, I gotta stop attacking. All right, so they finally got their divisions on the line, and they'll probably start attacking us in quite a few places. We always have a fallback line of like level ten forts in places, so that's not too bad. Oh boy. Oh crap! Here we go. Now they're gonna attack like crazy. Hopefully. Alright, so we've killed off 130,000 of them versus 8,000 of us. Not bad. We just have to be ready and just dig in, guys. Dig the heck in. Alright, so, so far we're holding pretty well. What is the air battle like? Give me one second here. Sorry. My apologies. My, one of my cats was all, actually on my lap while I was reading after the fade in. Yep, and he's tired. Cool, so so far not too bad. Oh, and don't forget, I don't care what it costs. Spend, spend. You can spend more. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. In the office, for what seemed like the hundredth time that day, the silly Shushkin looked over the legislation crowding the president no his desk. It's still so hard to believe that the presidency, for so long the preview of Pokrishkin and his ilk was now in the hands of a peasant from Altay, but he, he was here and it was his. Picking up one of the many pages on his desk, Shushkin looked over it once more, slowly flipping through its contents. Workers' protections, new regulations encompassing lobbying, and other vectors of corporate influence, stringent antitrust laws. It wouldn't be enough to defame the corporations, but not by a long shot. Their influence reached far too deep for a mere piece of legislation to reverse the impact of a decade of unfettered exploitation, but it was a start. The corporate giants and uh, Pokerishkin's clique would fight them every step of the way. Their lackeys in the Duma, the Siloviki, who had been long paid off with the corporate gold, Shushkin, however, had the will of the people and the pe power of the presidency on his side. It's good to be president. Actually, if that's the case, uh, increase uh, maybe more loyalty. Eh, it's okay for now. I have a little bit of power. They don't really like us that much, though. Increase maybe loyalty, maybe a little bit more. We don't have enough of that, though. Whatever. And there was a comment saying that, uh, with this saying, you can influence your own region, which kind of sucks, but whatever. It is what it is. Dreams of a Federation. When it was originally conceived, the Russian Federation was supposed to be Russia's best chance of democracy. The idealism of the Central Siberian Republic was always doomed to failure, but the Federation could provide a tactical, practical, reasonable alternative that would reunite the Russian lands and peoples in a secure future defined by freedom and stability. When it morphed into under Pokrushkin's rule was a bastardized, authoritarian imitation of the original goal, but the damage could still be undone. Slowly, surely, the peoples of Russia are starting to wake up. They're realizing that this new president promises are not false and his words are not empty. The Russian Federation can really be a nation of practical democracy rather than corrupt authority. After decades of bitter, win bitter winters, spring is coming to the motherland. Cool. And we have, that's the last focus, hopefully. Even though we already finished one of our last focuses. Anyone have upgrades? Please keep defending, guys. Please, 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 please do well. They're racking up casualties like crazy. 148 divisions? My goodness. 49 divisions? They still have a buttload of manpower, though. Uh, that's a case. Let's see if we can improve. No, nothing there. Anything here? Yes. I suppose for now. Why not? Get some more radar. That'd be pretty good if we can. Because we're building, 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 building. Uh, they've lost a third of a million so far, almost. Now it's a third of a million. Now just hold. That's the most important thing to do. Is just hold, hold, hold. Hold yourself. Hold someone else. Hold someone you care about, including yourself. Oh, Ryder and a Falcon. It was early in the morning when the two men met in one of the many rooms of the presidential palace. Flames flickering in the fireplace, snow melt falling from the frost-covered roof. The new and former president of the Siberian Federation glancing at each other uneasily. They've been friends once, comrades in arms during the final days of the Republic. Those days are gone, a friendship strained and broken amidst the rise of the Federation. Where did it all go wrong, Vasily? Where did we lose our way? Shushkin glanced up at Pokrushkin's voice, the Falcon of Siberia staring down into his drink. There's no malice in his eyes, no resentment, just a colorless pallor and a resent expression. Shushkin stared back at his own drink for he had no response. No answer to the question that he himself might have pondered on many a sleepless night. He can still faintly remember the optimism in the Federation's early days, the final break from the decaying Republic amidst the chaos of the Siberian War and Anarchist Revolt, a time where the Federation seemed to have a place for everybody, regardless of ideology or wealth, before the corruption and cynicism set in before the rise of the Siloviki and the corporations. 
You can point to many a time where he or Pokrushkin should have stepped in, but should have moved in to rein the excesses of the, the excesses of the system. But the Federation itself was a reaction as a result of the failed ide idealism of the poets and artists in Tomsk. Perhaps the cynicism, which arose in idealism's place, was simple yet another inevitable, another result of the Republic's failure. Shushkin looked back up at the compatriot. The Falcon was waiting for an answer, and he so spoke with the honest truth. I don't know, Pokrushkin. I just don't know. Oh boy. Hey, industrial robots, cool. Let's get some more uh, factory output. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Even though we can do more extraction stuff. Uh, rubber is not too much of a big concern. How are we doing this well? I don't understand. I really don't understand. Usually, we're going to just be dying here like crazy. But, like, okay. Let's see. That's like 30 combo with, right? So, I guess I can't throw that many soldiers in each battle, even though it looks like it. But that's a lot of divisions. It looks like they're out of anti-tank. Um, There's a lot of anti-tank. They're out of our... How are they out of artillery this already? They're using Mosin Nagant still? Um, they gotta have other stuff than that. PPSH-41s? This is going a lot better than I thought it would. That's a big bolt. 762 by 25. Oh, it's by 25, maybe not big, but yeah. 762 is a pretty nice round. AKA-47s. Um, anything else? How is this, how is this all zero? This doesn't make any sense. How? I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like it like this. But, How? Oh, okay. He, he, replacing purge officers. He has purge officers. That's good to know. Um, at the same time, get even better recon. More recon for the people. We're missing not that many more tanks. Good. We're making about f roughly five a day. Wow. Uh, I'm still a little apprehensive to attack because he still has way enough manpower, but look at how weak these guys are. My goodness. We still have some manpower left. I don't care about construction spending. Just build, 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 build. If you need to, actually build some air bases here too. Roads should be perfect. And yeah, not bad. Don't worry about that GDP and debt. Don't worry about it too much. Infantry anti-tank will be very, very nice. It's almost 72. We, can, we don't even have anti-air stuff yet. Wow. Oh, well. Too late for that. Uh, that's a little bit too ahead of time for that. Light aircraft. Better jet engines. Actually, how many do we have? We do have some plus of planes. Look at that. Nice. Not bad. Get more cast. I love the cast. More cast. Cast go burr. Um, do we dare try to risk an attack? I mean, this would be the safest place to do it. Uh, not bad. If we get attack here, we can destroy nine divisions. That actually would be very good for us. Alright then, they've already killed off almost a million of their own manpower. My goodness. Well, a million will die once we encircle and destroy this little group down here. Good. Let's head on in, guys. Nine divisions will die from the hands of five-ish. Okay, they're already... Jesus Christ, they're already dead. Well, there goes a million. 38 divisions versus 147. This is a little weird. Not gonna lie, a little weird. Alright, so now we can probably attack here. Oh, that might not go... Oh, well, maybe it'll go okay. What type of division are they using? Not that many battalions, okay. We gotta go slow. Oh, they're taking attrition too. I like that. I like that a lot. Advanced development phase? Sure, might as well. And. How about the monthly stuff first? And then do that one. Jesus. And then they're gonna get attacked as you're moving in. Pretty normal stuff. That's gonna take a while to get over there. That's fine. Yep, you got attacked. 13 divisions is quite a few. Um, you guys over there. Hmm. Can you guys just attack that way, maybe? You guys hang it up here, though. I really wonder. I want to try this. It's probably a really bad idea, though. Never mind. It's a pretty good idea. It's a pretty good idea. Holy crap. How? How does this make sense? They had a, We saw that they had a massive stock of goods. Stockpile of goods. We just overran so many guys. 141 divisions? How? This should be... What is going on? Power stations? Sure, why not? Our preparation. That might be actually a little bit bugged, because we did the max preparation already, but nothing happened. We can't do anything about that. We just killed another, like, 9 divisions off.
Now they are probably getting a little bit more strength, especially as oh, that's not good. That's not good. Are they attacking us a little bit more? Oh, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Um, we are out of manpower, so which is really, really unfortunate. Boost, boost. Save. We have a little bit more manpower. Uh, we are not at the point of breaking them yet. They still have 130 flipping divisions, but our guys are strong enough that hopefully we can do well here. I hope we can take them out fast enough. Just because we're going to have no map power soon enough, which is not very good for us. Actually, the people, less political power, oh, army attack. We can increase the power, maybe. Ooh, but severe, I mean, that's okay. Power loyalty is zero. What if we increase the loyalty here? Oh, we won't have enough time to do that, so come on. Just keep doing well, guys. You're doing a great job. We've killed off another 20 divisions. We've already killed almost roughly 2 million Russians. Jesus. Hey, if you... Oh, yes! If you want to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. We get slightly better monthly uh, population, which is not great, but I'm still going to be gladly using it. Uh, they actually might be broken at this point because they have so few divisions. I can't really tell. Uh, one, oh, I guess it's 2v7 or something. They have less than 100. Jesus Christ, what the heck? Well, we're at the Ural Mountains. Um, we have 40 divisions. That's pretty nice, right? All right, so go ahead and hold. Actually, I'm gonna read, do the line. Get our guys on the front line first. Don't worry about attacking. Plan, 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 plan. Get that planning done so we get a lot of extra attacks. Oh yeah, don't worry about that, guys. Don't worry about that. We have more military factories. Great. Get some more of that then, and then get some more of that, and then get. Or maybe we don't need any more, any more of that. You can do that there. We need more tanks and such. So. Of course, we do have air superiority, so that's probably one of the reasons why. Recon 5, good. Or recon whatever it is. 4. Oh, we got recon 4. That's not bad. More soft attack. We like more soft attack. Even though it's probably not going to do very much for us. That's okay. Up them out. Oh, you guys can probably go there too. Beautiful. They have less than 90 divisions. Good. Get in there so we can keep training, 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 training. Planning, 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 planning. Yeah, your goal is probably to get like right here. Nice. Better jet engines are good. Better jet casts. We still take out Kazakhstan too, so. Um, hey, better research facilities. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. And we get cutting edge research facilities. 10% more uh, research speed. Pretty good. That's pretty darn nice. You should be able to do well here. And if anything, you should actually be able to move up to here, maybe? Or just encircle and destroy those two divisions. Come on, get that planning done. Oh, we might already have that planning done. Nice. Get these guys up here first. I want to take out Novi Port, perhaps. Perhaps. I still have plenty of manpower. I'm sure their stockpile is pretty good as well. Nice. Come on. Are you up there yet? Come on. Come on. Oops. Uh. Don't you dare stop us from doing what we need to do. Oh, we can't quite do that yet. Alright, so we could try it, but, uh, you know, it's looking pretty not great in some areas. It's looking pretty okay in some areas, but, hmm. I'd love to encircle these guys and kill them off, so maybe we could try this. And then take one of you guys and go down there. But the tanks are just going to be speeding around this way. Okay, not bad, not bad. Good. We got them. <sighs> Very good. Um, I guess we could probably actually just try to just break them like that, maybe? Let's break them here first. They do have a few divisions that are fully stockpiled. And doing quite well for themselves. Three. And this is what we can do defenses, which is good. Two. One. Begin a horrendous assault. Hopefully, come on. I see a lot of red. We were ransom one, maybe? 84 divisions, not bad. Wow, this is probably one of the, so far. Oh, oh, we got the cipher done too. Look at that. We took long enough. We got the cipher done. 
Yes, we take even less damage on the assault. Probably one of the best uh, wars we've had in just terms of just trying to kill off enemies here, probably. Just because I don't remember the last time that we were this successful with fighting such a massive opposition. So, yeah, this is very weird. Come on, you guys can get down there. Yes! Are we still moving in? Hopefully, yes. Yes, please. We still have a sliver of manpower. Sliver, 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 sliver of manpower. Can you guys actually break them? Yes, you can. Uh, do you guys not have orders? I thought I'd give you orders to go this way. Go, 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 go. Oh! Oh, I don't remember seeing that one. No. Good luck, Syria. Israel's there. That's cool. Nice. That's so many dead. This is probably one of the wars that we've had that we killed off so many Russians. So many are dead. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying this. But, like, goodness gracious. Hey, we found a little bit more, ma more manpower. Look at that. I'm not sure how we did it, but I like it. Do they have fewer divisions than us now? No, they still have 60, which is not bad, actually. Seeing as they started with almost 150. My goodness. Don't forget, though. Get some more goods. But also, really, roads. Like, roads are super important for this. Supplies, movement, you know, the good stuff. Wow. Just, wow. Yeah, this is probably, this is surprisingly... Extremely surprisingly much easier than I thought it would be. Like, why? I mean, they get, they get attacked quite a bit early on, but man. Man, oh man. We actually had a little bit of lack of fuel, huh? I'm glad we got all that those engineers. Oh, baby. Oh, mama. Almost three million more enemy Russians dead. Just... Did Mr. Mario think he could do well? He should have elected Corn Man. Or should have gotten Corn Man. Maybe not elected him, but gotten him. Wow. Just. Incredible. Oh, if you guys can move this way and cut them all off, that'd be really cool. Happy 1972, everyone, though. Hope you're having a great year. Well, we've got more divisions than them now. Pretty nuts. This has been a nutty last episode. Especially with this last part. Well, look at that. We've got all, we're getting more manpower to take. We don't have any of these cores, do we? No, we don't. I guess getting more compliance does help, but it's not like that much compliance. 11%, 9% is not very much. So I'm not exactly sure why we're getting even more manpower, but... I'll take it. Are we mobilizing because of... The no, we're not mobilizing anymore. Let's go down there or something. Cut all these guys in the south off. Even though they're so already so weak. Wow. Just... Jesus. Look at that. We have 80,000 almost. Is it because of every month? Maybe it's because of every month. Like, you know, we get some more population growth. But, just wow. Did we get them? We got them! Wow! That was probably the the most incredibly once... Almost one-sided, like, victory. Like... Honestly, like, maybe we should not have won there, just because it was that crazy, but... Reunify the motherland? Um, we'll do that after we... Oh, we should have done this earlier. Ah, that's what we're doing anyways right now. Let's go and pause this. And let time go on. The Federation reunites Russia. United and free.
very cold dreams of federation and a visit to the ob the rising sun illuminated the waters of the ob with a brilliant glow orange splotches dancing amidst its glimmering waters they were clearer now thanks to the new regulations and he could see several families picketing along the river banks shushkin allowed himself a small drink as he took in the sight remembering his excursion to the waterfront nearly a decade ago unchecked corporate excess and institutional corruption a government run by and forced local strongmen he had changed all that no longer did corporate greed dictate policy and law no matter no longer were the working classes squeezed for every penny there was still much to be done of course fair regulations, the issue of Polkrishkin's clique, increased federalization, the ever-present matter of hated Germans, yes. Yet, as he saw workers joking around in the fields just beyond the river and families enjoying a vacation for the first seven years, Shushkin felt something stir inside of him. The idealism which was once so infectious in the early days of the CSR. He was not doing... He was just... He, ah. He was doing this for them, for the people of Russia, of all of Russia, not just those born into power, but those blessed by the circumstance. He remembered those days of headiness and optimism, and how everything fell apart under the strain of the Siberian War, and how the fighting against the anarchists, the food riots, the shootings. He poured himself another drink as the morning sun rose high in the sky. The CSR may have fallen under the strain of war, but the Federation, his Federation, was different, stronger, more robust, yet no less concern for the welfare of its citizens. It was different than the CSR it had to be, or everything would have been for nothing. Now, it says we're done, but we have one little giant Central Asian state that needs to be removed. And we need to core a lot more things, so we have a few months left before we take them out, which is totally fine. So, hey, look, we changed our flag. The Russian Federation actually exists. Nice, not too bad. All right, so here, I think, you know, holy crap, that's a lot of cost. That is a lot of cost. Oh, baby. Oh, mama. If you'd like to read about the, the, this, please go right ahead, because I just want to keep going on. The MIG, or MiG-25 prototype, has done pretty well so far itself, but let's keep building us up here. More civvies. Infinite civvies, because we build really fast. So that doesn't really matter. We might actually be able to get all this. Holy crap, look at that. Because we cored all this stuff. Nice. We actually might be able to get all this stuff done before uh, we actually go to war. Yeah, probably not that extreme, but that would be really cool, though. Nice. And we can do Project Crocodile. Or we can integrate more stuff. I want to integrate more stuff, just because... Oh my goodness, over a million... Boris, yes please. This shouldn't take too long, but still. But yeah, it's been a pretty fun campaign. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I always love playing as the Russian unifiers. A lot of fun, but almost less than a month. Not bad. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. Just keep building. Who cares about the cost, right? $37 billion? Our annual growth is not too bad either. Central Design Bureau. Look at that. That's pretty good. Division attack. Research speed. Uh, supply consumption does go up, which is unfortunate, but whatever. Pokrushkin is still there. So, so Kobolev. Resource extraction is very nice. I'll get more rubber, actually. Wow. 37.7.5 billion. Look at that. It'll be done super, 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 super soon. Love it. How much political power are we getting a day? 1.4? Not bad. Could be better, but not bad. How many guys can? How many? They don't have that many divisions, do they? Kazakh National Republic, they're led by. Onoprienko. Cool. Very nice. 16 divisions? Ah, that's more than I thought they would. Jawai Bolim. Well, they're all going to die. 37.55, not bad. Going course Samara, that'd be pretty good to do. And by boosting it up, how much would this cost us normally? 27. Wow. You could actually probably still cut this down. It doesn't do much at all, but whatever. A million manpower still. Maintenance companies are very nice. Very, very nice. Very good, my friends. Stud wait, what? Study something else? Election season? Oh, study foreign reactor designs. That wouldn't be bad, but we're pretty much done with all this anyway, so. I'd like to integrate some more places, but not bad. Pretty fun campaign, I'd say. Like I said earlier. Pretty fun. Against overwhelming odds, we still succeeded. We still succeeded. Keep building, 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 though. Look at all this we're building. Oh, it's so nice. Industrially, 379 factories. Not good enough, but it is what it is. If you'd like to improve academic base, please go right ahead. It's something to be celebrated with secondary schooling. Not bad. Cool. 380 factories. Not enough. About to have 381, maybe. Oh, 380 goes to 390. Look at that. 37... 0.47, not bad. A defense. Eh, hey, you must do that one. Advance the development stage to so keep moving on. Ah, eh, can never get this one done before we, you know, we finish the campaign as, you know, a Russian warlord, which kind of sucks, but it's okay. Someday. Someday. Let 
Logistics 3? How about uh, Logistics 4? Or 3? I guess we did 2. And we'll probably do Onega. Oh, no, no. Orenburg. Orenburg is, has quite a few people, I think, if I remember correctly. And those Ferdlos would be very nice as well. Where's the capital? How many have died? We've lost 600 versus 100,000. That's a pretty good casualty rates. 110,000? 120,000? 130,000? 150,000? My goodness. Oh, Alma Ata was the capital. Cool. And there we go, my friends. I think that'll be it for this campaign. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, like I said several times, and I hope you did as well. And if you did, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in a different campaign. Thanks for watching, and have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.